Talk, you know, the title pretty much explains itself. Uh, Shannon's indoctrination uh, for improving the epistemology of what the ontology of the academic metaphysical language is, a short, simple guide. So very straightforward. So what the fuck are all these words about? Okay, so this like gives you the explanation of, of what they are. So epistemology is the shit we know. Ontology is uh, what is a shit. Metaphysics is all the funky shit. Uh, then uh, logic is organizing shit. So you know where shit is and ethics is doing good shit. Uh, the uh, bottom two, I'm not really going to explain because I feel you probably already have like a rough intuitive understanding of what they are, but it's just the three that I really want to hit on because the, the wording that they use is not uh, <laughs> immediately obvious what they mean. So if we look at first, epistemology, the shit we know. So this is the uh, study of knowledge. It's answering questions of uh, like what we know and how we know it. And so it's, it's things like, okay, like I have a, a pen in my hand at the moment. Like, how do I know that? Well, I could justify that by like, I have a sensory experience of it. Like I can feel it in my hands. I can also visually see it. And I also know this is a uh, pen. Like these are knowledge things that I have and it's around epistemology is how you justify that uh, thing. So it's so also like uh, how you know that shit and uh, do you do you actually know anything as well? Like how do you justify uh, knowledge of anything? So all these questions really, when you think of epistemology, it's just around questions of knowing. That That's basically what they're uh, addressing. And then next we have uh, ontology. So what is a shit? So that's sort of like, it relates to epistemology. Cause like I have, so I was talking about the pen before. So I have knowledge of having a pen in my hand, but then like, as part of that, it's I'm engaging with its ontology. So like it's within the category of pen, it's black. Like these are part of its properties. Some people might disagree, but this is physical um, a thing. Like, so it's about capturing that. So it's, it's questions of what it is. So really when you think of ontology, think of it as questions of what stuff is and like how, how it's structured. Now it, you could also look at um, like, is a hot dog a sandwich? That's a question of ontology because it's about categories. So it's like, does the sand, or does the hot dog fulfill the requirements to be a sandwich? And then again, you can see how that can relate to epistemology, like how we know that. So then we'll have the epistemology, which we have the knowledge of whether or like, what a sandwich is and what a hot dog is, how they relate together. And then ontology is kind of like what's out there, like what that actual thing that we're talking about is. So those two are like the easy ones. And then there's metaphysics, which is all the other funky shit. It is the dumping ground of philosophy. Um, Basically, it came about because Aristotle wrote, wrote all these physics, and then there was a whole bunch of other stuff he wrote after that, and that was called uh, after physics or metaphysics, and a whole bunch of things sort of fell under there. Now, ont ontology, though, uh, some people will disagree with this. Uh, I don't know where I stand on the issue, but for the sake of this, we're going to say ontology falls under metaphysics, that it's a type of meta, uh, a subcategory of metaphysics. But it also covers things like, like, what is the mind? Like, what's the mind made of? Like, what's the experience of that? Like, what is causality? Like, you know, like, when the pen goes up, like, what's actually going on? Like, what's actually causing that to happen? Uh, it can also be things like we we're sort of talking about in the previous conversations around like free will determinism and how they sort of relate to stoicism. So questions like that. So we were engaged in metaphysical questions uh, when people were asking those type of things. So in short, it's basically just a bunch of funky shit. Uh, it's it's kind of like, if it's not epistemology, it's not ontology, then it's probably metaphysics. 
as long as it's not logic or uh, ethics. Simple. So, in summary, so so you can you could say that you know you have a epistemological understanding of a, uh, epistemology. You know what ontology is, and metaphysics is all the other funky shit and includes ontology. So these are meant as like starting points to what they are, because there can be subtle differences. Like if I was to dig into these terms anymore, I would be making commitments uh, beyond the minor ones I've made to, to, to give like a broad sketch um, that people will disagree over exactly where the lines are between these uh, sort of uh, categories or whether they exist in the first place. And, and what even is like, you can even have the ontology of the categories. Like, what does it mean? Like when we have this logic thing or these ethics, like what, what actually is going on there? Uh, yeah, so that's, that's basically what those are. So just to go back to the thing. Yeah, so epistemology, it's the shit we know. Ontology is what is a shit and metaphysics is all the other funky shit. And then there's logic and ethics as well. So now you all understand academic language and we'll be able to read whatever your heart desires. Um, but I wanted to briefly touch on some of the stuff of the uh, Stoics position, just to sort of center this or, or give you some idea of how these terms relate to the Stoics. So for their epistemology, I, lean towards there not being a good word. Empiric if I had to choose one, empiricism is probably the closest. Um, and then some people would say there's a little bit of rationalism thrown in. So what those words mean is, so they're questions of epistemology. So the, it's that knowing, like, how do we know this? So what they uh, sort of say there, when an empiricist will say, we know through our senses. So like, I experienced this pen that means I can know there's a pen there. I don't need to justify this any further. Like it's just, there's a pen, like that's it. That's the end of it. Whether it's the rationalist is we can know through our reason. So I know that my, I have senses. My senses mean that I am experiencing this pen and I ought to believe that there's a pen there. It's not perfect, but that's basically what the position is. Now, that, yeah, like I said, those terms are uh, rough approximations of what the Stoic position is. So it's worth trying to keep in mind that when you're using these terms, you shouldn't think of it as the end of the conversation, it's the start of the conversation. So it's saying the Stoics are empiricists, by which I mean da 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 da. Like there needs to be that expansion after it. Um, there's no like bureau of philosophy that enforces these terms of exactly what that means. Uh, so they do sort of need to have that explanation of what you're sort of meaning uh, with them. And then, so then we've got uh, the ontology is they're physicalists. So everything is physical, but I think sometimes, especially within modern stoicism, that sort of gets skipped over and it's like, oh, you know, the, uh, the stoics were all into everything's physical. So they're just scientists. And it's like, well, they had a lot of funky stuff in their ontology. So they believed the gods were physical, souls were physical. Uh, there was also a physical fire. Well, to call it a fire, but it's sort of a, a thing that keeps everything going that um, was a fire-like property that was uh, directly connected to God. And that's what all the gods, and that's what gave us the ability for movement and uh, to do things and rationalization and such. So even like then it's like, you can call them a physicalist, but no, um, uh, or a, a physicist is probably not gonna find their position of physicalism comparable to science. And it's worth trying to uh, engage with that part, not just simply be like, oh, well, that were just physicists. Uh, the other thing too, like within their metaphysics, now, this is sort of, it, it's a touch uh, acronistic to sort of talk about them having a metaphysics because the term isn't one that they really would have accepted. 
because for everything it's all physical like there's nothing beyond the physical but they as that term sort of evolved over time uh there are things that they had some metaphysical commitments so for example they viewed the mind as physical i found this good diagram and i sort of just wanted to use it which is like the difference between uh dualism so that's when there's both uh physical and a mind so they work together physicalists where there's just physical idealism where there's just the mind and then i've never heard of this one before neutral monism let's just pretend that doesn't exist um so that so they view like the the mind as a physical thing now even when i say mind th that is also a little bit possibly anachronistic like where i'm bringing in a modern concept that they wouldn't have really acknowledged what we refer to the mind as equivalent to what they're talking about when they talk about the soul uh yeah i don't really know how to explain that which is not a great answer for a presentation but you know this is part of a this presentation is actually a performative art piece about stoic resilience when you're you're in a bad talk with a presenter who uh wrote it the day before um but yeah so and, and like that's the thing too like it's it's worth remembering the soul is a physical thing for the stoics so they believe the only thing that can interact with a physical thing is another physical thing like they have to be banging together somehow so this idea of like central monism uh, uh cartesian dualism just doesn't they'll be like like how's that interacted which is actually like that's a fairly common critique that still like was around uh in Descartes time it's still around now where people uh view dualism as having this problem of how the the physical and the non-physical interact but it is always worth keeping in mind when we're talking about physical in the stoic sense this is something which is a bit weird for what we would consider physical and oh yeah so then uh, we've got like around like free will and determinism so that'd be called something it's called a compatibilist so that's kind of what we're talking about uh in the previous talk with uh Sarah there like around how the determinism and free will works together so it means that they believe that there's both free will so that we can make our own decisions but everything is also determined with what will happen now with these terms everything should have an asterisk next to it because there are exceptions to it so the stoics existed for 500 years they were around for a long time there was many thinkers over that time and there was many disputes like just to take one example here i said like they were physicalists but then there were some stoics within the middle stoa um so i can't remember exactly what the year was for that but uh they held to a dualist perspective so that there was a soul and the soul was of a different type of substance um it was a uh, pisidius i can't remember his name one of the p ones in the middle stoa and yeah so all of these views are contentious like they within the ancient literature they are disputed generally so it's always worth keeping in mind okay, when someone says like oh the stoics were physicalists it's like okay but who are you actually referencing which stoic is it that you're talking about because it's not it's not a consistent uh view and there were disputes over how that worked this is the uh final part here so this is about how to deal with words that you don't understand when reading philosophy and i think like the first point i think is really important you're not dumb for not knowing like everybody has a point uh where they see a word for the first time you shouldn't feel bad about that and you're going to see that word a second time and you're going to be like i have no idea what that is i still on occasion look up what epistemology is what ontology is what metaphysics is because i'm like uh oh, yeah that word i think i used to know that um so there's nothing wrong with not knowing it and you shouldn't feel bad about it these are challenging ideas uh that you're uh wrestling with now i think there's there's also something to this important it's around knowing what words to care about this is a hard 
thing to explain, but it's something you can sort of learn over time where when you're reading a piece, like think of like, what's that chapter about? Like, for example, I've been reading a book recently um, and it was talking about reason. Like that was the first chapter. If I find any word that's a, talking about epistemology, ontology, or some word I don't really understand, unless I think it's actually key to reason, I'm not going to look it up because I know the thing that the author wants to explain to me is reason. And so long as I think I understand that, you can sort of skimp over it. Now, it's a hard thing to balance. Like there's other authors I've read where they hide a definition of a word in their introduction and don't put it anywhere else in their work. Um, now, that makes it, that's hard and, you know, what can you do? But um, yeah, so it, it, but it's important just to try to think of like, okay, what are they trying to do? And um, yeah, work from there. Now, when you do think a word's important, I, I still, th and, and like you think it's key to the arguments, like say I was reading that thing on reason, I came across a word I didn't understand. Treat it as a black box. Like it's this, you sort of know that it's kind of interacting somehow, like through context, like it's doing something vaguely. And then reading on might explain what, it, what the author is actually going for. Because sometimes what will happen, the author will want to use the idea to get your attention, to be like, hey, this is why this idea is important. This is what I'm going to do with this idea. And then they go forward and go, this is what I mean by this idea. So it's worth sometimes just sort of reading through uh, to get that understanding. If you're not sure or like it's a really short paper or something like that, so you don't think they're actually going to give an explanation, I think a good resource is actually Wikipedia because that will give you a rough idea of what the word is, like where it's sitting, what it sort of means, even if you just read the summary uh, of it. Because generally with these words, there's, like I said before, there's no bureau of philosophy. There's no one that enforces a definition. So there's going to be differences between the way they, that someone's using the word and what they mean by the word and what they think the word encapsulates. So the Wikipedia could be used to get like the general idea of where they're bouncing around. And then you sort of just need to wrestle with where they've uh, positioned the word um, in the in the text. Now, uh, one of the other things too, I just wanted to point out, even if you don't, if you like look at Wikipedia, you're like, okay, I don't really get this word. I would suggest just reading past it. I just go through the, go through the text. Now, this is a, an idea that uh, Judith brought up, I think uh, yesterday in our breakout room around this idea of transformation. So the idea of transformation, I think was from Hado where you're reading a text and like you'll read it as a 20 year old and you just like, it won't, you won't get it. But then over the years, it will slowly stew with you and sit with you. And then you come back to read it at a later time in life. And then it just like, it clicks because it's transformative because it's not just like you've read it at that point and it had no relationship to your second reading. It's that because you've had this time for it to sort of develop uh, within your mind that you were able to uh, have a transformation of your understanding of what the text was engaged with. So I think that's also important too. Like uh, philosophy books aren't meant to be read once. They should be read uh, multiple times and uh, engaged with. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's probably about my talk.